Inside this box, there is a cat. And while the box is closed, the cat is both dead and alive. Isn't that spooky? Quantum physics is one of the most misunderstood topics in all of science, from New Age mystics to science fiction using it as an excuse not to call their technology magic. But some of the blame falls upon science communicators, who often, perhaps unconsciously, are less interested in explaining the actual science and are more interested in telling a spooky story. To people who understand quantum physics, it's not actually spooky. Think about a watch, an old mechanical watch. On the surface, it looks magical and mysterious. A device that knows the time and moves to show it to you. Spooky. But when you open it up, you can see the gears and follow the chain of motion from the motor to the hands. This is wondrous, incredible, and also it is no longer spooky. Quantum physics is like the watch, impersonal, mechanical. If you're interested in understanding the clockwork of the universe, it's great. On the other hand, if you're looking for the meaning of life, you would probably be better off looking in a more human direction. Today, I am going to show you the gears under the cover. I'm going to start my explanation at a place most people don't, quantum field theory. Forget cats in boxes, forget particles, forget matter and energy, just imagine an infinite empty space with absolutely nothing in it. Except in this space there is a field, no not that type of field, a physical field, something that extends from infinity to infinity in all six directions and has a strength at every point called its amplitude. The field has waves. The waves have energy and momentum and other physical properties. These waves behave like waves in anything else. They propagate, they pass through one another, and they cause constructive and destructive interference as they are superimposed over one another. If they run into something, the waves will either treat it as a boundary or as something to interact with. Now imagine that in a portion of the field which is flat, there is a sudden spike in the amplitude. The spike spreads out as a wave in all directions. Interestingly, the wave's total amplitude added up over the entire wave stays the same, no matter how far it spreads out. In the lingo, we say the wave is normalized. There can be waves of different sizes, that is, waves with amplitudes normalized to different values. And here is where things start to get quantum. There is a limit to how small the normalized amplitude of a wave in this field can be. No matter how you try to make a smaller perturbation, whether it be messing with the equations or trying experiments, you can't. It is a quantum, a smallest possible increment. This wave of smallest normalized amplitude is what we call a particle. You may think, that's weird, I thought particles were little dots bouncing around. And indeed, this is how we model them for larger scale systems. But what we're seeing here is called wave-particle duality. Fundamentally, particles are waves. But they're not normal waves, they're quantum waves. Waves of the smallest possible normalized amplitude. Schrodinger's cat, the one that's both dead and alive, is a metaphor for the position of a particle as the wave spreads out. The particle is simultaneously in all of the places where the wave has high amplitude. This doesn't actually work for cats in boxes, for reasons we'll look at in a future video. In our everyday experience with waves, when part of the wave runs into something, it would interact and the rest of the wave would continue on as it was. But remember, this wave is a particle. If only part of its wave interacted and the rest continued on unimpeded, we would be left with a wave that had less than the minimum normalized amplitude, and that's impossible. What happens is that when a particle interacts, it interacts all at once. You might think that when a part of the particle wave interacts, it has to send a signal to the rest of the wave saying, hey, I've interacted, you're no longer allowed to interact. But here's the thing, it doesn't have to do this. The rest of the particle wave simply does not interact. The fact that the wave does not have to signal the rest of itself is called non-locality. 
In a future video, we will talk about the two major interpretations of what is happening here, the Copenhagen interpretation and the many worlds interpretation. If you have ever heard someone say, no one understands quantum physics, they don't mean nobody has any idea what's going on at all. What they mean is nobody fully understands how the rest of the wave knows when the particle interacts. This is what the real universe is like. All that exists within space is a number of overlapping fields with waves that carry information and interact with one another. It is from this that matter and energy and ultimately everything we know and love from the world we live in is made. Do you remember seeing pictures of atoms and electron orbitals in chemistry class? Those are pictures of the shapes of the electron waves around a positively charged nucleus which of course is also a wave. Whenever you hear someone say atoms are mostly empty space, they're kinda wrong. Atoms are mostly electron wave. We have a bad habit in popular science of talking about fun ideas from history rather than what we actually think today. From atoms comes chemistry. From chemistry comes biology. From biology comes evolution. And from evolution, evolution comes, comes us. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them in the comments. I know this video was abstract, and I have a tendency to assume others will just pick up the logic naturally. We'll have more videos on quantum physics in the future, and your questions could help shape those videos. If you would like to help a starving artist through the first half of 2021, you will be more than welcome on my Patreon. And you can subscribe for more awesome science and sci-fi concepts. Happy New Year! I'll see you next time.